So now after the fetch API and XML HTTP request, let's have a look at Axios. Now Axios is a third party library, a JavaScript library, which we can use in any JavaScript project. And it uses promises and nonetheless builds up on XML HTTP request. So it basically does what we manually did here in the first video where we wrapped XML HTTP request and promisified it. But of course the Axios library does this in a more sophisticated way, offering us way more features and benefits. It also has great browser support as you see, because it uses XML HTTP request under the hood and it's really easy to use. Now, we'll not npm install it here because I don't have an npm project. We have a very simple project here. We can just include it from a CDN by copying that link here. And then we want to include it here above our own script. That script should also be fetched to access.js now so that we use this script where we can write our access logic. So with this import added and this import changed, we're ready to write some code that uses the access package. Now, in case you missed the last two videos, definitely check them out because there you learn the important fundamentals of all of that. In this video, just like in the last videos, I'll use this request dummy API here to get a list of users and to also send a post request to fake registration. Now, it's a fake API. No real data is exchanged. Data you send to the server also isn't stored there, but it's a great API for playing around with HTTP requests and experimenting with these features. So let's start by sending a GET request with the help of Axios. Because I'm importing it with a CDN here, we have a globally available Axios object now. I can just access it like this. Of course, you find a full documentation on the official GitHub page. And we can send a GET request by calling the GET method on Axios. Now this get method takes the URL to which you want to send a get request and then it returns a promise where you can listen to the success case and the failure case. Now the URL is the same URL I used in the other videos. This is my get URL. So I'll copy that and now just send my request to that URL. Now, no additional configuration is required here, though if you wanted to additionally configure the request, you could absolutely do that. You can pass in a second argument, which is a JavaScript object that takes certain options, which you find described in detail on the official docs, of course, where you can fine tune the request to your requirements. Here, I'll just send it like this though. And now in the then block here, we can work with the response. And actually here, let's see what we get. Let's console log response here and save that. And now reload our little application here and click get data. Now what you see is we get this object. This object holds some information about the response, for example, the status code, information about the request which was sent, the headers that were part of the response, and also very important, of course, the data. Now, unlike with the fetch API, data is no streamed data, which we manually have to convert to a snapshot like we did it here. Instead, it's already the parsed and converted object. It's no JSON data, which we have to parse manually. It's no stream data, which we have to turn into a snapshot. It's normal JavaScript data, a JavaScript object we can work with. So that's pretty convenient with Axis. We already got everything we need in this then block. And therefore, sending the GET request is already done at this point. Now let's do the same for posting data. Again, we can use Axios and now the POST method there. Now previously, in the other two videos, I created utility functions, send HTTP request, which would wrap the fetch API or XML HTTP request. I did this to avoid code duplication. With Axis, we don't really need that because Axis already is the utility function or the utility object we're utilizing. So there's little we could gain by wrapping this in yet another utility function. Instead, we already are using get here, which is pre-configured for get requests, and post here, which is pre-configured for post requests. Now, the post method also takes a URL to which you want to send a request. And here, I want to send a request to this register API here. So it's slash register at the end instead of slash users. And of course now I also want to append data. Now for access on a post request, 
to append data, we simply pass in a second argument. This second argument is a JavaScript object which will automatically be converted to JSON data by Axios, so by the library, and which will then be appended to the outgoing POST request. So therefore here, I wanna append a JavaScript object, and now it's important that you append the right data for this dummy API, otherwise the dummy API will give you an error, and that's the data you also found in the dummy API docs here, essentially. It's this email password pair here, so I wanna append that here, However, of course, I'll convert it to a regular JavaScript object. We don't need quotes around email and password. And with that, we're sending a post request. So let's check the response here and console log response here to see whether that works. If we save that and we go back to our page here, reload it and post data, that's looking good. We got a 200 status code and data is indeed signaling that, yeah, it worked. This is some dummy data the API returns for a pseudo successful user registration. Not really a registration because it's all just a dummy API, but it worked. Now, one important note, if we have a look at the network tab and we have a look at the outgoing request, then we see that actually the content type application JSON header was automatically added by Axios. So what Axis does is it analyzes the data you're appending and it then does the right thing with it. For a JavaScript object, it converts it to JSON and it also adds the right header. If we would have passed different data here, let's say just some text here, and I try to send a request with that, then I actually get back an error response. But if we check the network tab, and there the headers, we see that the content type was set to something different and we didn't add JSON data, but form data. So Axios is really smart regarding the data you append and it analyzes the data you append and then converts it correctly and sets the right headers for the outgoing request. So we don't need to configure the headers manually here. Of course, you still could do that if you wanted to. You can pass a third argument to post, get, and so on, which is an object that allows you to configure the request. And there you can add a headers key, which just like in the case of the fetch API is an object where you can add your own headers like this here. So you can override this default or add other headers. That is absolutely possible. As you see, if I reload here, if we inspect the outgoing request, now it has my own content type header. But of course, for just the content type, you don't really need that because Axis is pretty smart about that. Now, what about errors? That was a bit tricky with both the XML HTTP request, but also especially with the fetch API, where we needed this inner wrapped API promise chain here to properly handle errors and get the error response body. How does this work for Axis? Let's say we're sending a request to register, but we're omitting the password and therefore the API will throw an error. Now let's add a catch method here and catch any error we might be getting. And let's then console log that error to the console to see whether we make it into this block. That was not the case with the fetch API, for example. There we always ended up in the success block by default. And if we do make it in there, let's see what's inside the error object or string or whatever we're getting. So if we save that, and we now post here, we see we're getting back this output here. Now it's coming from line 28 in my script and that indeed is the right line. That is my error handling block. So an important takeaway is that Axios automatically throws an error if the response has a error status code. So it does not just throw errors if you have a technical error, let's say connectivity issues, but also if you have a technically successful response that has a 400 or 500 status code though. And that's a major difference compared to the fetch API and XML HTTP request. There, if we had a technically successful response, which just had a error status code, so a 400-ish or 500-ish status code, we would always make it into the success handlers. And then we manually had to check the status code there and make sure we throw an error, maybe parse the error response and so on. 
Axis is different, for error status codes, it automatically float throws an error so that we automatically end up in our catch block here. Now to learn more about the error response though, and for example, get its data, we can access a response property on this error object. And if we do so and post the data, you see we get our normal response object with the response data, which in this case holds the error description. So that's useful for getting the body of the response, even if it had a status code of 400 or 500 or whatever it is. And that's there for Axios. Now you can probably see that working with Axis is really straightforward, which is why it is very popular and often used instead of XML HTTP request or fetch. Actually, I'd say XML HTTP request is rarely used like this because it requires a lot of overhead setup. And here I'm just covering some basic cases. We're not doing anything complicated here. The fetch API is a bit more popular to be used just as it is. But the more complex your application gets, the more important error handling is and so on, the more inconvenient it can get to work with it. And therefore, Axis is quite popular because there you almost get the best of both worlds. You get a promise-based API and still a lot of the heavy lifting is taken away from you. You get convenience methods for sending GET and POST requests and error handling just works. So therefore, of course, it's totally up to you to work with whatever you want or need in your projects. But giving Axis a chance or considering Axis over the Fetch API or XML HTTP request might be worth it.